Welcome back everybody. We are going to do a little bit of a server tour today. I know it's been a long time since we've uh, seen the inside of uh, our base of operations here on this server, our, uh, our home server, and um, we're going to rectify that and give you a, a little tour of all the stuff that I've done since we've been able to record. Uh, we went through a period of a uh, really long time since we were able to actually record anything or do any get started on any builds but um, why don't we start here in the middle this is the kill zone for the iron farm slash mob farm uh, that uh, goes all the way up to the top there you normally won't see iron golems come down into here you'll see just the drops come down through because they are actually killed in their spawn area most of the time <laughs> they're uh, they're actually locked into their spawn area if they spawn there every once in a while one will spawn uh, outside of the area in which they get locked I will show you that some other time we are gonna do this level by level though by the way so we have a few different levels to this place and uh, you actually as they as you go up the levels it becomes progressively less complete what in the world is he is that the right yeah that's the right level never mind there's the villagers <laughs> all the way up there at the top that uh, cause the iron golems to spawn um, but the uh, the iron golems being locked into the spawn area is not actually a problem so much they uh, the grinder the farm itself actually can spawn up to four golems simultaneously based on uh, my observations when I was making modifications to it and um, it uh, so it can spawn pretty good it can spawn uh, at a pretty fast rate at least for iron golems and uh, so I had no worries about locking them into the spawn because there's no uh, there's no problem with speed I get enough I get more than enough iron for our purposes that way and then taking a look around here this actually um uh, let me see if I can get up there what do I have on I have a lot on me apparently you can see the remains of uh, a lag issue I found I accidentally left the chicken farm on before I uh, before we left on our last little jaunt through the wilderness uh, this is just a simple uh, piston killer it's got some pressure plates on top of the hoppers here uh, some repeaters on top of some hoppers that activate some piston crushers when mobs fall into it and uh, that is a change that I made from the previous design that had a clock and it I wanted to minimize as much lag as possible to make it as easy as possible on wifey's computer and this is our trash disposal no sign <laughs> it's all kind of a um, uh, what do you call it not very user friendly <laughs> we've got some farmer villagers, we've got a little trading center here we've got our priests and, er, I keep doing that, our librarians priests wear white, darn it, no, unless they're arcane priests and then they wear purple so we've got our librarians and our little purple priests and uh, our butchers over here and our blacksmiths go in their own separate dedicated location uh, don't remember how far. I've got these traded up pretty far. I think one of them is traded all the way through to where everything is accessible. Pretty sure, at least. Or it's pretty darn close. So yeah, we've got our little source of all the diamond gear we could ever need. And I actually only need one of each for uh, farmers and blacksmiths and uh, uh, butchers. But I like to have at least two, especially in this instance, because I had plenty of them upstairs. So I just found ones with bad trades and then moved on. And this is the little, uh, I don't remember if I showed this or not, this is the automated furnace. Basically you've got a, a, a little uh, chest minecart or minecart with chest running back there to distribute these uh, blaze rods or whatever other kind of fuel you need. And then you can deposit however much you want in whatever you want to cook of whatever you want to cook into the hoppers above the furnaces and it'll automatically load them and then as it's done it will automatically unload them into these chests which I do believe yeah I think I've got everything emptied and I have some cobblestone if you wanted a demonstration but um yeah so fairly simple just uh, that's only for the purposes of distributing the fuel and that's to keep to make sure distribution is even or relatively even but it also has the option of turning off the uh, 
the automatic removal of the items that are cooked. So if you're cooking gold, for instance, maybe, just maybe, you want that uh, uh, experience from that. So we'll watch one cook here. Actually, we'll, we'll just move on for the moment. <laughs> Continue on the tour, and then we'll, we'll show you when it comes back that it's still there. Just my, just my luck, I'll have that setting backwards or something and I've forgotten. This is the enchanting room. Walk in and... There we go, some nice, lovely server lag there. And uh, you got all of the items that need to be enchanted here. Obviously, I haven't spent a lot of time decorating. Um, there's a... <laughs> kind of made it look like a face, just to be funny. We've got the uh, bottles of enchanting that we've traded for here. There, you can tell I haven't been cheating. <laughs> I just have that much going on with the farms. And got that board waiting for uh, an update that would actually fix the uh, FPS issues. <laughs> I uh, did a lot of villager trading. And, um, yeah, so nothing too spectacular here. Just a little redstone build that uh, has the teeth slash bookshelves. My gosh, there's a lot of lag uh, going there. And, yeah. So I got the setting right. <laughs> I remembered it correctly. This is, uh, when you have this on, it will not suck the items out. So you can actually grab them yourself and get the uh, XP. Or if you turn it off, there you go. It'll start sucking the finished product out. Which, um, there was a nasty little bug there for a while that uh, really annoyed me, where sometimes when you'd update or when you'd put stuff in, it would clear wipe the furnace clear. Yeah, this predates that bug and uh, uh, has survived the fix for it. It was affected by the issue quite annoyingly. So I'll show you this in a second because we're going to move on to an updated version. This is my little potion brewing station, con fully configurable potion, potion brewing station. We've got our little anvil uh, use here where it's actually, uh, I think it was a Doc M tutorial I saw and then I, I built a test version of it and I liked it so much that I went ahead and used it. It's just a bud switch that determines when the anvil is broken and releases the next anvil from the refiller. Up there, the little refill stack. And in here, we have an archive of enchanted... Actually, this is, uh, yeah, this is the section that has the stuff that needs to be repaired or used, I think. Yeah, this is the quote-unquote crap section. And then over here is the ready-to-go. see, yeah, there's my current useful ready-to-go armor and weapons and such. haven't decided what to put there or whether to reorganize that. And this has books. So we'll have knockback there. It's the uh, ender eye for whatever reason. Sharpness. Sharpness is the brick? Some of these, I swear, actually do make sense. <laughs> I think I was still experimenting with... Uh, let's see. Bane of Arthropods is the spider eye, obviously. This would be, um, Smite. You <laughs> And, uh, then similarly, these are the tools. These are the weapon enchants, uh, and these are the tool enchants. That would be... Hmm. There's protection. Oh, this is tools and armor. Okay. I'm remembering it better. <laughs> and, of course, you did see the, uh, a previous version of this. See, is this safe to break? I don't even remember. Let's go to another one. So I did some other experimenting up there with a uh, automated sorting and refilling and whatnot. I was dabbling. It's always dangerous. So yeah, you come into here and um, the uh, the minecart. You can send it, uh, set it to don't push. You can set it to deposit, and it will run along the top here and uh, deposit all of the items in the chest here into the hoppers and chest in one grand storage system and then if it's either empty if it's empty or you recall it using the other control it will force it to come back and uh, return to the uh, not user interface but um, it's the cart return <laughs> it will force it to come back and similarly if you're making a withdrawal it'll run down here as you can see the track switched it'll run down here and it goes through a very similar process in the sense that it will continue sucking items in from the hoppers and the storage system above and then uh, when it's full instead of empty it will uh, return up through here and I can show you that real quick with um, 
well, at least one of those. I'm not going to fill up a chest, uh, a minecart chest with something and then come back to you on it. Yeah. Clear out some of this inventory here. Do, 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 do. No idea how I wound up with all that stuff in there. Well, aside from the chicken. <laughs> Alright, so, cart return is off. Which, that's one thing, I, the uh, cart return has to be off with this design, because if you turn it on, it'll send the minecart the wrong way. It's something, it's an improvement that I want to make later to make that so that, um, either cart return is a toggle, like a, um, it deactivates whenever the minecart actually returns, or whatnot. But, let's see here, we want to deposit, so we'll deposit, and we have nothing to deposit, so... Come on, seven! Please don't tell me I broke this before recording. <laughs> I didn't actually touch it before recording, but yeah, there you go, you saw it come back. And let's just dump all these yummy little nether bricks back in there. And, uh, I won't bother demoing the cart return because I actually did that in, uh, the other video, I think, the when I showed this off. Oh, Hoppy Day, I think it was called. And then, of course, we've got one for sandstone, nether brick, and uh, cobblestone. And <laughs> I completely walked by this. Got my little friend here. Uh, he's guarding all of the uh, um, all of the builds and the uh, the machines, and letting me know if uh, he likes it or not, and if I'm doing a good job. And apparently, he likes it, so I'll trust his opinion for the moment. <laughs> I think he might be biased because I'm his creator, but. Uh, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just let him uh, let him think that his opinion means a lot. And um, over here we have the slime farm, which is just a little a little spawning platform. Since it's slimes always come after you. Look, there's a little little baby slime there, and then they fall down in there and drown, and then we get to play with their slime balls. Spectacular. <laughs> I've played around with this so much, just to have a little slime fountain, slime ball fountain, or slime fountain coming up through. But, uh, yeah, I started to get way too many slime balls, so I just decorated it a little bit and let it be. And here's the storage area. Uh, the item frames are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, there is an alternating, uh, uh, plane chest, trap chest <laughs> thing going on here. And, um, yeah, the item frames are just a general description of what's inside. And, uh, most of the time for many things like, you know, we've got soul sand in here, you're just gonna have soul sand. But if it's something like the saddle, I think I've got everything that's horse related. The, uh, lily pad is everything that's, uh, foliage, decor related and so forth. But, yeah. So let's go back over here, because this is actually what I want to show you, simply because I want to make sure that I get in the uh, version 2 today. Uh, this is my configurable potion brewing system. It's a little refill station down here. And then, oh, I actually had some left. I wanted to let it refill the water bottles. And it is currently configured. I'm, I don't know, I was just stuck on faces when I was decorating in here, so I get a little, ah, uh, say, ah, uh, open, close. And you can actually get stuck down in there, which is unfortunate, but uh, you have to break a few things to get back out. So let's, instead of uh, harming two splash potions, let's make a healing potion. Selector panel, courtesy of an Etho video, by the way. Uh, the toggles over here, I think, were something that Etho had come up with on the very first episode that he did after the Comparator was introduced, and this is, um, I actually changed the entire, uh, not the look of the control, of the configuration panel, but the, uh, uh, function of it, it the entire thing is going to be tileable in version 2. Um, we want a healing potion. Why are none of these active? Maybe I turn them off. Let's make that, and we won't leave it to the, uh, to the, uh, splash potion. We'll make this quick, and there's the activate button. And then there you go. You've got the nether wart coming in. And this is all done with water streams and, uh, droppers and comparators in the back. Um, you can see, there's the refill. Let's see if I can get back here without breaking anything. Yeah have the selector panel 
and then it feeds back up to the front to activate the redstone lamp and then back here just drop on back in here it feeds in and if it's not activated up there oh this is a horrible example because I've got it all closed off anyway I'll show you more I'll show you a better example in version 2 but yeah it locks the uh, torch to keep it from when the pulse comes through here to brew it'll turn this off and turn the torch off above it and the other side will have it locked if it's not selected on the selector panel the same goes over here as far as that aspect of the design goes but uh, we have some timing to make sure that they get launched into the water last and get up into I think I've got that completely closed off too which is actually a good thing overall come on oh I was just fiddling around in creative and I'm hopping around fiddling around in my lab on creative and hopping around like an idiot trying to fly <laughs> yeah feeds into water streams and yeah this view is just complete crap so let's move on to version 2 right after I prove that this actually works there you go potion of healing instant health too so let's pop over to my lab lab uh, single player world and uh, I'll show you version 2 of this which is significantly improved and we're back here in my lab I say back here because we're actually back and then I ran into the next sentence saying we're here in my lab we've never been to my lab before and I cleaned up some of it but there's a lot of mess there's actually the uh, experiments that I was running for the version 1 of the potion uh, brewing factory configuration that uh, thing <laughs> and uh, this is the new version everything here in the selector panel is tileable and uh, it's almost infinitely tileable you can have almost an infinite number of uh, ingredients obviously we don't so that's fortunate you just have to separate one every now and then if, if they decide to add um, get up to a number greater than 15 for reasons of uh, redstone connectivity but yeah you just select uh, you've got it set up here for uh, the health splash potion health to splash potion so let's turn this off because this is no longer a ethos style selector panel in the sense that you don't hit one button and then it turns the rest of them off uh, let's make this we'll use a spider eye and you can choose however many ingredients and whatever you want uh, let's make it let's corrupt the poison potion and make it a harming potion and we'll make it a harming two potion and let's make it a, let's leave it a splash potion too and let's see here we have water bottles that's a good start <laughs> and uh, oh I am actually let's make some room in here <laughs> some leftovers from testing water bottles go in there I don't like that I don't like the decoration there it looks funky but um I was putting something together so that this actually worked back here, the refilling, which is actually locked. So if you take, uh, if when you throw this switch to pull the potions into the chest down here, you don't get uh, an endless stream of water bottles flowing in behind them. But yeah, let's see, we've got the water bottle. Yeah, so let's brew. Well, this had better work this time. <laughs> I mean, it was working before. It's been working, but we've got our, another wart there. Spider eye, or, uh, yeah, spider eye, fermented spider eye, glowstone, and gunpowder in the right order. Um, the other thing I don't like, of course, is you can see through here because of the, the locking potion uh, refilling mechanism. But yeah, we'll let those brew for a second. You can see that all three stations have received the appropriate ingredients in the appropriate order. Not that order always matters, but we'll come over here and you'll see the changes that I made to the selector panel. Uh, if you've seen uh, Ethos selector panel, um, or at least the that previous version, I don't know if he's updated it or not. I don't actually keep up on all of the videos, but yeah, the... Uh, signal comes out through here, you press the button, it sends a one tick pulse through here into a tileable um, uh, toggle selector and uh, so it selects this and this sends the signal up, you can see we have gunpowder here on the end selected and that locks 
right up here. This turns this off so that it's not locked, rather. And everything that's not selected, which this was redstone, yeah, this is locked, so this torch over here will never turn on while this is active. And you can show, you can see here that um, as the signal comes back through, it's inverted again, and the redstone uh, the piston withdraws the redstone block so that that lamp is not lit, which allows it to be indicated on the front panel here that it is not, in fact, selected as an as a an active ingredient. And then the main difference that I changed, aside from the the increased compactness, I think it went from 23 wide to 18 wide for this whole thing. Uh, while adding two brewing stations, <laughs> I, I'm really, I really like the res the end result. By the way, um, it feeds into when you press the button, it sends the pulse along here, which activates the. Uh, it turns these torches off, which then, if the uh, ingredient is selected on the panel, there will turn this torch on, power this block, activate this dropper, which then sends the ingredient along a chain of hoppers instead of a water stream on top of ice which is much faster in my experience and it's also much better to much easier to control basically uh, what you want to make sure you do to make sure the ingredients get in the right order instead of having to fiddle around with timing and everything you just want to make sure that they're in the appropriate order here you want all your primary ingredients here and then all your modifiers after that and because you want to be able to use this um, Again, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. You want to be able to use this before you get to the uh, tertiary modifiers here. Then you, um, or the potential tertiary modifiers here. Then you, uh, you get your, uh, s this secondary modifier to, um, to go first, basically. It'll get there before anything that's behind it, if it's selected. And then on the other side here, we just have the uh, relatively simple signal coming up to activate some nether wart dispensers or droppers that feed in first to these and then the signal is relayed on to the uh, to the back here that you saw from the other side now the one big drawback here obviously is that this is a really large number of hoppers for a survival world so unless you have an iron farm or you mine like crazy and you have nothing else to use your iron for I mean, this is all aside from the massive amount of redstone that this takes, um, but this is definitely a survival intended for survival worlds. This is some. This is what I'm going to be building on the uh, the multiplayer server that I play with with um, the other guys over there that I've been making videos for Azaragon's Adventures. Uh, this actually, I didn't show this, but yeah, I am definitely building this version or some version of it. In fact, I think I'm actually gonna wind up stashing it underground, <laughs> which is gonna be, uh, which is gonna involve some changes and actually free me up to do more uh, comparator-based mechanisms around these uh, brewing stands. But I've got to do some more experimenting before I get to that point, before I get a, a third or fourth version of this going. Um, this area down here actually is where the signal comes through to lock the uh, the hoppers up here that handle the refilling. It'll lock these down here that handle emptying the potions when uh, when it's off, when the switch is off, so that the potions don't come sucking down into the chest while we're brewing. And then when we flip the switch on, it'll lock the uh, the water bottle refill and that helps. I, I played around with some timing and some signal extenders and stuff and I know I can actually do it so you can press a button and it'll dump and get everything right but it was getting too unwieldy back there so I just I just tore everything out and um, went back to uh, just a simple little uh, toggle here. So that is all for today. Uh, I will be building this in my survival world so you'll probably see that built uh, piece by piece over a period of time and uh, so I'm not going to do a tutorial or anything further than the little uh, show and tell that I've done here but uh, that is all for today and I will see you next time <laughs>